What's up guys, JV2017 here, and first off I want to wish everybody a happy New Year's. Hope you had an awesome New Year's party like I did and celebrated it, and uh, looking forward to a great uh, year of games for 2012, but I'd like to kind of wrap up 2011 with my top 10 games of 2011. Now, before I start this video, this is all my opinion. You can disagree with me, that's fine. I'm not 100% right, nobody is because we all have opinions. So now that I've got that out of the way, I hope you guys will enjoy this, and um, once again, don't tell me, oh, that's not the best game, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is my opinion. You can have yours. Feel free to comment below with uh, your top 10 as well. So so first off, I'm going to list my top 25 games of 2011 uh, across all systems, and then I'm going to narrow it down to my top 10. Little Big Planet 2, Mass Effect 2, Dead Space 2. Bulletstorm, Killzone 3, Dragon Age 2, Crisis 2, Mortal Kombat, Portal 2, L.A. Noir, The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings, Infamous 2, Dead Island, Gears of War 3, Dark Souls, Rage, Batman Arkham City, Battlefield 3, Uncharted 3, Modern Warfare 3, Skyrim, Assassin's Creed, Revelations, Saints Row the Third, Minecraft, Star Wars The Old Republic. So that's my top 25, and right now I'm just going to tell you guys, lay it down on the line. I don't play a lot of PS3, and I think it'd be kind of stupid if I were to tell you, you know, all about PS3 games that I've never played because I really haven't played them. So I'm just going to give you in rapid fire the top five best reviewed PS3 games on that list uh, that I gave you guys. So there you go. Killzone 3 with an 8.5, Little Big Planet 2 with a 9, Infamous 2 with a 9, The Mass Effect 2 port to the PS3 with a 9.5, and of course the biggest PS3 exclusive ever invented, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception with a 10. Wow. Alright, so now it's time for my top 10 games of 2011. These are the games that I think deserve the top spots and that I enjoyed the most. It's really a combination, so obviously you guys will have your top 10, but this is my top 10 games of 2011. Coming in at number 10, we have Star Wars The Old Republic. Now, a lot of you guys probably has, have not played this game. Maybe you've never even heard of it. It actually came out uh, about two weeks ago, and Star Wars The Old Republic, oh my god. I am mildly obsessed. It's an MMORPG. It's, it's an MMO with a story, more importantly. It's the first of its kind. And it, I'm really impressed by this game. It's made by Bioware, the guys who made Mass Effect, obviously, and uh, Dragon Age, you know. Just a great company. And that's probably one of the main reasons I got this game. And I am really, really enjoying it. It's incredibly immersive. It's got a fantastic narrative. Bioware never lets you down with a narrative. So I'm going to give Star Wars The Old Republic that number 10 spot. At number 9 is Dark Souls. Now, the reason Dark Souls is even in my top 10 it's just the fact that it's defining its own genre with Dead Souls, I believe it was. That game uh, came out and it was everybody's like, oh, it's so hard. Now we have Dark Souls, and Dark Souls is the hardest game, the hardest next-gen game ever created. I mean, come on, seriously. Name another game that's harder than this game. It's so incredibly difficult. I rented it for, your, for a few weeks. I was also mildly, mildly obsessed, but also frustrated. But whenever you beat that boss, beat that group of guys, every, si <coughs> every single enemy that you face in this game can kill you, and that's what's so unique about Dark Souls, and that's why it really, you know, I think earns a spot in my top 10. At number 9, I have Saints Row the Third. Now, the reason this game is even in my top 10 is just the fact that it's not afraid to, you know, <laughs> do the absolutely craziest, raunchiest, like, stuff that should not even really... You know, honestly, be in video games, Saints Row does it, and does it with style, basically. And, uh, yeah, you can do anything you want to. You can beat up people with gigantic, purple, fill-in-the-blank, you know. It's, 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 <laughs> this game is absolutely crazy. Do whatever you want. It's a sandbox. It's like an absolutely insane Grand Theft Auto. I'm a big fan of Grand Theft Auto. Can't wait for GTA V, but, um, yeah, Saints Row 3, you get top 10 because you're absolutely insane and crazy. At number 7 is Assassin's Creed Revelations, which is the finale of Ezio's story and Al Altair's story within the Assassin's Creed universe. And 
man, Assassin's Creed's obviously, I mean, it's it's one of my favorite franchises in uh, gaming of all time, and I just love the whole premise of Assassin's Creed, and I think they really, Ubisoft did an, a fantastic job of wrapping up Ezio's story and Altair's story, and uh, I'm just, you know, really excited to see where this franchise goes in the future, but, you know, for me, it was obvious that uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations would make my top ten, so here it is. At number 6 is L.A. Noir, which is one of the most unique games ever created. It plays like a movie, but yet you know you know you're playing a game, obviously, but uh, it's so easy to get immersed in this 1920s L.A. detective story. Uh, I really couldn't put down L.A. Noir until I, you know, freaking beat the game completely. And, um, you know, it, it's got such a great storyline with Cole Phelps, you know, this implacable... I mean, not crazy, but, you know, amazing, amazing detective, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, Bondi Games, you guys know how to make a game, and I'm really sad that you guys had to close down your studios, but um, Rockstar, oh my god, Rockstar makes incredible games, but L.A. Noir, if you haven't played this game, and, uh, you know, you want to be a detective, you want to, you know, have some kind of experience similar to probably what it's really like, L.A. Noir is a great game to try out. At number 5, I have Dead Space 2. Now, <laughs> this game was so scary for me. You know, I'm, I'm not really a scary game guy. I will completely admit that. And I had a walkthrough on my channel. A lot of you guys enjoyed it, but I had to take it down because of copyright. But it's a survival horror. You know, Dead Space, a lot of people were complaining that it's more action than horror. And that's absolutely no problem with this game. Dead Space 2 was scary as hell and told a story. And a lot of the stuff in Dead Space 2 is really, really cool. Like the... You know, the Church of Unitology, and everything about Isaac. And they finally showed Isaac Clarke's face in this game, which I thought was a fantastic idea. And at the very end, they hinted at a Dead Space 3. So I'll be looking forward to Dead Space 3, but Dead Space 2 was a fantastic game, and I think a lot of people are overlooking it when they're looking at the best games of uh, 2011. Uh, fantastic sound, really, really scary stuff. Dead Space 2 was great. At number four, I have Portal 2, and this game obviously sequeled to Valve's Portal, which was like uh, an amazing game, amazing idea, and uh, incredible puzzle game, but Portal 2, I think, really, really uh, shines because of its voice acting and just the overall character that the voice actors give. Of course, Stephen Merchant played Wheatley, obviously the story of uh, being your total best friend, and then I'm not going to spoil anything. But uh, next is Cave Johnson, played by that dude from Spider-Man. <laughs> you know the guy who like screams the new, the newspaper dude, uh, James Jameson or something like that, JJ Jameson. But anyways, uh, Portal Two, yeah, fantastic story, fantastic puzzles. Like it's not easy, you know. I'm sure some of you guys are like Portal pros, and you're like, it was so easy. But um, yeah, Portal, fantastic puzzle game, and I really think those voice actors made uh, Portal shine and give it a lot of character. Great job, Val. At number five is Batman Arkham City, which is the incredible sequel to Batman Arkham Asylum. Uh, this basically means, makes everything about Batman freaking amazing. And uh, Batman, the combat is just, it's all about combos. And, you know, it really kind of brings out, you know, what Batman really is. He's a detective, a crime fighter, he, you know, always fights for justice, always what's good. You know, you can really kind of uh, delve into Batman's character and personality in Batman Arkham City. And it also, uh, you know, brings so many uh, villains. Like, Arkham City took on so many villains from, um, you know, the Batman comics. And it really did a masterpiece. With Like, it's a masterpiece. It's I'm, I'm amazed that they were able to have, like, I don't know how many villains up here in Arkham City. But they're all in there for a reason and they're not just thrown in there it's not like oh there's penguin blah 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 he's there but it actually fits into the story and then you also have robin catwoman nightwing you know all these other characters that are playable as well which was a huge surprise everybody thought they were just going to be batman but um yeah arkham city if you haven't played this game pick it up now before you freak out i made battlefield 3 and modern warfare 3 tie at number two because i know you people would throw a fit and you can't handle it because it's the internet but anyways, I'm going to start with Modern Warfare 3. Uh, the multiplayer, obviously, incredibly addicting. The most uh, best-selling game of all time. I'm sure it's Modern Warfare 3 now. Um, yeah, Modern Warfare 3. I haven't even beat the campaign myself, but I've heard it's really actually pretty good. 
and survival mode, a new brand new game mode that's kind of reminiscent of zombies and spec ops. There's also spec ops, but uh, survival is a new mode. People are having a lot of fun with that, and uh, of course, spec ops returns and the multiplayer. Like I already said, incredibly addicting. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have lost relationships over this game mode and um, uh, lost sleep, lack of appetite, uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, it's Modern Warfare 3. What do you expect? And like I said, again at number two is Battlefield 3. And yeah, Battlefield 3. Not a lot of si to say except, you know, incredible sound, incredible graphics. Uh, the maps are huge and detailed. And uh, one of my favorite things to do in this game is just to hop in a jet and fly around. I know I am absolutely useless to my team in multiplayer, but Battlefield is beautiful in jets and helicopters. If you can uh, just hop into a multiplayer match in Battlefield 3 and get into a jet or a helicopter and, you know, fly around with your buddies, it's really freaking fun. I can't remember uh, the map where... You, uh, well, my favorite one where you're kind of near the coast and you can just fly around in jets. And <laughs> it's really hard to use a jet and it's not overpowered. But, anyways, Battlefield 3, ultimate team kind of team player kind of uh, multiplayer game. I, I would really say that Battlefield 3 accomplishes that and a uh, fantastic game, really. And, of course, at number one, I don't think this was any doubt for anybody, it's Skyrim. And. Uh, it's honestly I'm at a loss of words what to say about this game except the fact that you have to get it you have to buy Skyrim you have to play it there's so many hours of gameplay it's like 300 before you do absolutely everything you can do in this game you would have played you have to play 300 hours and the maximum level I think it's like 81 or something you know you're not gonna get there you're never gonna get to level 81 without cheating unfortunately there is a way of cheating but um yeah Skyrim, you know, you choose how you want to play, you pick up a staff, you use that staff, you get better with the staff. You pick up a bow and arrow, you use the bow and arrow, you get better with the bow and arrow. It's a really ingenious system, the story is really, really awesome, there's so many side quests to do, there's so many damn stuff to do in this game, I don't even think I'll be done with it by the time the next Elder Scrolls ro <laughs> rolls around. I mean, Skyrim, incredible, incredible game, Bethesda, you guys fucking rock that's all i gotta say and uh keep making games but skyrim there's so much stuff to do incredible story uh it's basically the perfect game that's really how i would like to describe it so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope i didn't deeply hurt your feelings when i said your your game wasn't number one but um yep once again this is my top 10 games of 2011 and i want you guys to i encourage you guys to in the comments below Give me your top 10, maybe your top 5, maybe just your top 3 or your top game of 2011. I really like to uh, see what you guys put, and also I'd like to see what you guys are looking forward uh, to in 2012. There's a lot of good games coming out, but 2011 was a very damn good year for video games, and uh, I hope 2012 is just as good. So, once again, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you later. Peace!